The movie begins inside a South Korean flight where all the people are terrified due to a mysterious reason. Several passengers, including the main pilot, have already died in a brutal way. The plane, which is heading to Hawaii, soon reaches the US mainland and everyone on board becomes relieved, thinking their nightmare has finally come to an end. However, little did they know that they're in for one of the most terrorizing rides in the history of aviation. The US government immediately denies their entry and sends them away. Left with no options, the flight returns back to Korea. But surprisingly, at the airport, thousands of people are protesting against their landing. This forces the plane to divert its route and ask for help from neighboring countries like China and Japan. Sadly, instead of help, all they receive is threats from several fighter planes to leave their airspace. At last, the flight gets stuck in limbo, with virtually no country in the world accepting them. Then, we are taken back to eight hours earlier, where it all started. At the Incheon International Airport, we see a shady-looking guy named Ryu wandering around. Soon, he heads to a ticket counter and asks the receptionist which flight has the most passengers. However, she refuses to answer because it's against airport policy and is private information. Meanwhile, a man named Park and his daughter Su Min are waiting in line to board a plane. Su heads off by herself to the bathroom, but the women's line is too long, so she uses the men's instead. Ryu is alone in the men's bathroom, and when he is all alone, he makes a small cut inside his armpit and inserts a capsule. After he stitches the wound, and applies the dressing, he notices someone looking at him from inside one of the toilet stalls. Ryu approaches the stall, but suddenly, Park enters the bathroom looking for his daughter. It turns out that Sue is the one who was spying on Ryu, and the two leave to board the plane. Elsewhere, a police officer, Ino, is on a call with his wife, who's about to board a plane to Hawaii for vacation. Unfortunately, Ino has got some extra work, so he cannot join her. Later, when he reaches his workplace, the police department, he receives a video from some kids in which one of their neighbors is threatening to hijack a plane. Lane. The other officers simply take this as a prank and decide to ignore it, but Eno is skeptical. After a bit of deliberation, he eventually decides to pay the kids a visit to get a better understanding of the situation. It turns out that the man in the video is actually their neighbor. Suspicious, Eno and another officer investigate the man's flat, and to their horror, they find a dead human body in the corner of his room, tightly wrapped in plastic. Back at the airport, Park and his daughter Sue are about to board the plane when they are confronted by the strange man from earlier, Ryu. He starts asking them personally questions, and also about their destination. As expected, Park becomes furious and threatens the man to go away. But, unfortunately, Ryu finds out that the father-daughter duo is heading to Hawaii, so he books a ticket for the same place. Shortly after going through airport security, Ryu is questioned about a metal device in his bag, but he configures it and verifies that it's just his asthma inhaler. The movie then shifts to the plane, where Ryu, Park, Sue, and other passengers, including Eno's wife, have just boarded. After the announcements, the plane takes off, and shortly Shortly after, Ryu heads into the bathroom. There, he removes his wound dressing and takes out the capsule. He then places the capsule in his asthma inhaler, which turns out to be a spray container. After this, he sprays the entire room with the strange substance whilst covering his own mouth and nose. Meanwhile, in the suspect's apartment, a CSI agent concludes that the cause of the death of the body was poison. Another agent locates a box full of videotapes, and upon watching, they find a man putting a strange powder in a container full of experimental rats. Surprise Surprisingly, just after minutes, the rats start dying gruesomely while spouting blood. As the agents watch in horror, they conclude that the powder is in fact a virus, as the rats that did not come in contact with the powder also died. Furthermore, the dead body also tests positive for the same virus, putting all agents on high alert. Back in the plane, Ryu exits the bathroom and sees Sue waiting in line. But as the little girl opens the door, another man hurriedly enters the bathroom, saying it is urgent. Then, Ryu whispers something in Sue's ear and heads to his seat. Meanwhile, the man who entered the bathroom notices some powder in the air and starts coughing. He immediately complains about it to the flight hostess, and unfortunately, she also enters the contaminated room. In the meantime, a man is watching the plane threat video, which draws Park's attention. On a closer look, he notices that the perpetrator in the video resembles Ryu. Scared, he looks for his daughter and finds her waiting outside the bathroom. Then, he approaches the flight attendants and shows them the video, but they are not sure if it is Ryu. However, Park is adamant in his theory, so he asks his daughter to speak up. With a terrified look, the little girl says that Ryu has smuggled
smuggled something into the plane in his armpit. She also reveals that he whispered to her that everyone on this plane is going to die. Hearing all of this, one of the flight attendants finally confronts Ryu and asks for his ID. The latter takes out his visiting card and claims to be a scientist who is going to Honolulu to attend a conference. However, when the attendant presses him for more information, he refuses. In the meantime, Eno and a few officers rush to the airport and find an ID match with the person in the video. The perpetrator was revealed to be none other than Ryu himself. Realizing that his wife is also on the same flight, Eno is left speechless. In the plane, the man who entered the bathroom starts to get rashes on his skin. All of a sudden, one of his eyeballs bursts, and he vomits blood before falling to the ground. This causes a ruckus inside the plane, and when a physician passenger examines the man, she confirms that he has died. Because of this, Park immediately accuses Ryu of murdering the man. There are three pilots on board. The main pilot, Captain Wan, co-pilot Choi, and another pilot, Jang. The main pilot and Choi are in the cockpit while Jang is taking a rest before his scheduled shift. Soon, the pilots in the cockpit become aware about the situation on board, and they also learn about Ryu's involvement from mission control. When the situation starts getting out of hand, the co-pilot Choi exits the cockpit. He finds Park and Ryu tussling among a terrified audience and immediately breaks them up. It turns out that Park and Choi recognize each other. After calming everyone down, Choi asks Ryu for his ID, but the latter pretends to be American. He then attempts to run away to the cockpit, but the passengers manage to get a hold of him. Unfortunately, before he is restrained, Ryu takes out his spray and spreads it everywhere. Afterwards, Choi informs the main pilot, Captain Wan, that everyone is sick, including the other co-pilot, Jang. Hence, he decides not to enter the cockpit to prevent risking Captain Wan's life. Elsewhere, government officials and experts discuss the situation, including Transport Minister Kim and Eno's team. After thorough investigation, it is revealed that Ryu was the head of microbiology at the multinational firm Brecom. Sadly, even after numerous calls, the company refuses to cooperate, stating that they have no relations to the hijacking. Now, with time running out, Eno suggests the officials try to obtain the spray's antidote from Ryu before more people lose their lives. The officials agree, and soon Choi starts a conversation with Ryu as the government listens in. However, instead of helping, the psychopath keeps on saying that everyone on the plane will die. Choi tries forcing him for a treatment, but all of a sudden, Ryu spouts blood, indicating that he too has been infected. Suddenly, the plane starts to free fall, and it is revealed that the main pilot has died after somehow being exposed to the virus. Passengers fly everywhere, and the plane starts to spiral down. The other co-pilot, Jang, who has also become sick, somehow makes his way to the cockpit and tries to pull the steering up, but to no avail. Fortunately, before the plane crashes to the ground, Park also arrives at the cockpit and pulls the speed brake up, hence bringing the situation under control. Soon, Choi also reaches the cockpit and notices Park in his seat. As the two speak, we get to know that Park was once a famous pilot, but he had to quit after an accident. Meanwhile, Jang's condition begins to worsen, so Choi, who is the only unaffected pilot, mans the aircraft. On the other hand, Ryu passes away, while a passenger in the plane records the terror around him and sends it to the reporters. In the next scene, Eno suspects that Ryu's ex-employer Brecom has something to hide, as they are refusing to cooperate. Hence, he decides to go to its headquarters to talk to the director. Shortly after, he reaches the place and tries to force his way in, but the guards immediately block him, saying that a warrant is required. Hearing this, Eno becomes enraged and starts a fight with the guards. A reporter captures the altercation and posts it on the internet. Back inside the plane, people start fainting and dying, one after another. Therefore, the staff starts separating people. The ones who have symptoms of the virus go to the tail of the plane, while the others go to the front. Park, who is unaffected, heads to the front with his daughter, but a man stops them because Sue has developed blisters. It turns out that the little girl has eczema, but the angry mob has mistaken it for the virus. Not wanting the tension to rise anymore, Sue requests her dad to take her to the tail, and Park reluctantly obliges. In this way, several hours of terror have passed on the plane, and they have almost reached the US. The officials in Korea are positive that their American counterparts will take care of the situation and rescue the passengers. However, they couldn't be any more wrong. Acting pilot Choi suddenly receives a message from the US Mission Control, stating that the landing permission is denied as nothing is known about the virus and it bears too much of a risk. This leaves the pilot and the government officers devastated. Left with no options, Choi is ordered to fly the plane back to Korea. The news spreads like wildfire and all of the passengers fall into despair and lose all hope of surviving. Luckily, Eno gets a call from a Brecom employee after his fight with the guards goes viral. She reveals that a fellow Brecom employee named Sung Hoon fled the HQ as soon as he saw the news. This indicates that he might have conspired with Ryu. The police rush to the man's address, which soon turns into a desperate chase. Unfortunately, Eno and another officer get into a car crash, leaving them with minor injuries. But shockingly, instead of 
running away, the suspect Sung helps them. Later, Sung claims that he was actually tricked by Ryu and that he is not a co-conspirator. He tells the police that the highly infectious virus's name is SC1 and that Brecom acquired it illegally. He also reveals that some researchers got exposed to the virus, resulting in their untimely deaths. However, one survived and said that Ryu had intentionally exposed them to the virus. Afraid of the repercussions, the company covered up this incident by firing Ryu. After getting relieved from the company, Ryu contacted Sung and tricked him into passing a sample to him to clear his name. Hearing all this, a still banged up Eno tries to contact the researcher who had survived the virus. Meanwhile, on the plane, the chief attendant runs into Park inside the medical room and asks him why he quit being a pilot. Reluctantly, he reveals that during his last flight, one of the engines caught fire. Therefore, he made an emergency landing despite the disapproval from the control tower. Because of the quick thinking, all the passengers were saved. However, two flight attendants died. They were engulfed by the fire while helping the passengers escape. One of them is revealed to be Choi's wife. Just then, inside the cockpit, Choi begins to vomit blood. Now, with all the pilots either sick or dead, he requests Park to help him co-pilot the plane, as the latter is the only passenger who has flying experience. Although the previous incident has left Park scarred, he agrees to help immediately. A few hours later, Eno meets the survivor, who is still hospitalized to this day. He shows her a picture of the corpse from earlier, and she recognizes the virus as the same one she is exposed to. Shortly after, Transport Minister Kim finds out that Brecom has both the vaccine and the antivirus, so she heads to the HQ and forces them to cooperate. Later, Kim thanks Eno for his efforts, and the news channels report that Brecom will provide the vaccine and antivirus free of charge, much to the relief of the passengers. However, Choi continues to spout blood, so he decides to abruptly land in Narita Airport, Japan. He issues an emergency declaration and prepares to descend, but the Japanese control tower orders him to leave their airspace. However, Choi refuses the order, forcing the Japanese Air Force to appear with warning shots. Soon, a Japanese battle plane arrives from the opposite direction at full speed. The two planes almost collide, and ultimately, Choi is forced to lift his plane upwards. Because of the altercation, he becomes exhausted and faints, so Park quickly takes his place and flies the plane away from Japan. In no time, the Japanese officials face heavy criticism from the media and human rights groups all over the world. The country is forced to give an explanation, and their prime minister eventually announces that they turned away the plane because the virus has a much shorter incubation period than originally predicted. This means that the antivirus and vaccine may not even work. As a result, Korean politicians also start to worry, and the voices of people opposing the plane landing in Korea begin to get stronger. Determined to save everyone on that plane, Eno rushes to the quarantine facility made in Seoul Airport and offers to be an experimental subject for the antivirus. He forcefully injects the virus into himself and allows the researchers to test the antivirus on him. Soon, Kim finds out about this, and when she reaches the quarantine facility, Eno is already writhing in pain. To everyone's dismay, the antivirus doesn't work. Meanwhile, numerous violent protests break throughout Korea that oppose the plane landing. Hence, the government orders the Korean Air Force to stop the infected plane so that peace is maintained on land. The news quickly spreads on all TV channels, and the passengers on board also catch wind of this through their phones. Realizing that risking their loved ones and other people is not worth it, the passengers make peace with their fate. With this, Park contacts the control tower and broadcasts a message. He says that everyone on the plane is thankful for the great support, but they have collectively decided against landing, as it is the best solution for everyone. Before hanging up, Park also mentions that he will cut all radio communications and that this will be their last interaction. Soon, the passengers also begin to call their loved ones for one last time. After a while, they see the plane flying above them, heading to the nearby sea. Just when everyone has almost given up, Kim hears Eno's vital signs monitor starting to beep. As she stares at him with hope, he suddenly wakes up. The antivirus has miraculously worked, and Eno urges the authorities to call the plane back. Wasting no time, the control tower tries to contact the plane, but its radio has been turned off. As a last resort, they tell the families to contact the passengers via phone. The plan works, and when the people on board receive the message, they scream with joy. Park promptly turns the radio back on, and the plane heads for a nearby airbase. Unfortunately, the plane is low on fuel, and soon, it loses its power. Now, the only option is to glide down into a small airbase. But the problem is that the plane's acceleration is so high that it may risk skidding off the runway. But fortunately, this is where Park's experience comes in. He immediately circles the area a few times to reduce momentum and at the perfect time begins the descent. Soon, the wheels hit the ground and the plane rattles. However, it lands safely, much to everyone's relief. Several days pass by and Park goes to a get-together of the survivors. There, he meets co-pilot Choi and Eno. Sadly, the virus has left him permanently paralyzed, but his heroism 
saved the life of hundreds, or possibly thousands. The movie ends as Eno slightly holds his head up and smiles at Park. The moral of today's story is that butting the line to take a piss is bad news for everyone. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.